Good morning. Clover and Peach are looking good. Oh, you shivering, honey. Sweetheart, you're shivering. Why don't you go inside? Do you want some hay? Do you want some hay? Sweetheart. Good girl. Good girl. Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to Wilder Path Farm. Here, we're located in Northern Canada where we do homesteading, gardening, and everything in between. We're inside right now. I'm just putting on my winter coat and coveralls before we head out for the morning-ish uh, to get some chores done, to get some work done. And tomorrow is the start of that heavy snowfall um, that we talked about in the last video. So I'm gonna do some heavy snowfall prep, I guess you could call it. So let's go. Most of the winter prep that I have to do today <clears throat> is making sure that the shovels are placed at entrances, that they haven't been moved, um, ensuring that there's easy access to hay and water um, in case there's a snow in, securing and double checking the tarps on the hay covers. These two gals have been running around and having some fun as of late. Nala, Nala come, Luna. So these two have been a little excitable because the weather's pretty nice, I think. Um, you guys have been having too much fun, huh? Is that... Good girl. I think I'm overdressed. It is way too mild out for all my layers. <clears throat> Chickens get the fresh fruit, fruits and veggies today. Some watermelon, grapes, lettuce, green beans, kale, some tomatoes. Uh, there's also some figs in there today, which is nice. And then uh, I just gotta go back and grab their grain and some fresh water. Everyone looks super happy today, huh? Good morning. Good morning. There's not a lot of light in here. They just replaced their water. So we finished the stalls. We put all fresh bedding in and fresh bedding in this one as well. Um, we're gonna do the water a little bit later just because I don't want it to freeze even though it's not too cold out. Um, I usually just put the water in in the evening to ensure that it's fresh for when they come in and it's not frozen. It's the same thing with the goats and the chickens get their water um, in the morning. They're the only ones because that's when they drink. The goats and the horses drink usually in the evening before and after supper. Okay, let's go bring water to the chickens. I know some people um, have heated water I just dump it out in the evening and give them fresh stuff in the morning. Works well for me. There you go, guys. I don't think I've actually mentioned this in like any of my videos, but I do have like a heavily mixed 
flock. Um, that's because I wanted a really colorful egg basket and that's what I have. But I can go over some of the breeds with you if you're interested. But these gray ones, bluish gray ones here, there's a mix of them that look very similar and some of them are my Arcanas and then some of them are Olive Eggers. This little lady here is an Olive Egger. Um, we have some gold lace wine dots, some Morans, um, speckled Sussex. Also have like those nice lavender Orpingtons, uh, barn builders. Uh, one of my roosters here is an Americana, and then Captain's uh, Black Copper Moran. I really like the Moran eggs, and they're they're really good dual purpose birds. So, but all the other ones are like mixes, and they still lay colored eggs. Come on, Noah. I'm gonna try to hop over this fence without dropping a camera, but <clears throat> uh, in Canada, we don't really have any hatcheries. So, or at least one's near me, I guess. Um, so we ordered some to a local feed store and picked them up. They were mixed. They're like a mixed breeds and they make them kind of sound novelty. But in reality, they're not purebreds. Um, so that means like all the eggs that are laid, if I hatch those eggs, they're also mixed breeds. Let's go. Um, so it's no guarantee what colored egg I'd have. Um, <clears throat> like that's why I have the Americana rooster to hopefully get a blue egg laying gene into the flock. My egg baskets are absolutely beautiful and I'll insert a clip here. Um, yeah, there's like an assortment of greens, blues, like olive colored, um, browns, pinks. I think there's even like a lot, like a grayish purplish one, which is kind of cool. Um, and that's what I wanted. I wanted my eggs to be really colorful and pretty and um yeah and then also the black copper marines i like their eggs um often i see a lot of double yolks and the birds are pretty hefty and meaty so uh when i do have to uh call my hens because chickens only lay for um productively consistently for two years i will have to call them and obviously i'm hatching more every year um, to replace them, but at least those birds will be really nice meat. So this week, I think like the end of the week, I'm going to go through this garage. And like this is all temporary until we build out our feed room and our tack room. But like that's not on the priority. So we are just trying to make it work for now. Um, also like... The loop orders won't be here either. So it'll give it will give poor Nim back his garage. I think I've like taken up probably about a quarter of it. Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, it it's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna figure out a way this week to really condense how much space I'm taking up and organize it really well to just make sense. But for preparation for the big snowfall, I make sure that I have all the feed that I need in case we get snowed in. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to do all the water. So that means we gotta organize these buckets and um, most, almost all of them are empty. So we'll have to fill those back up along with the big, um, water barrel there i'm already soaking their dinner for the horses and then this is also soaking uh chicken food so hopefully that kind of helps you kind of get a grasp of some of the things that i do before a big storm um our generators here nala gentle or luna 
You have to be gentle with him. Oh my goodness, gentle. Now we're gentle. He's purring, guys, don't worry. He likes these dogs. They've kind of been raised around him, but I got to be, hey, careful, because uh, they're big and they sometimes forget how big they actually are. So we have the snow blower ready. Uh, we have a compressor in case uh, we need to pump any tires, do anything like that. Um, log splitter for extra firewood, I guess. And then the generator. So I more leave it up to Nem to like make sure that there's um, that they're working and running properly, but. We do have extra gas, um, cause they do run on gas. I mean, the log splitter doesn't, it runs on electricity, but the um, snow blower and the generator do, as well as our ATV that does plow um, our driveway. So yeah, we need to make sure that we have gasoline. We also make sure that there's propane in the heater. This may sound like a lot of things to you, but this is all stuff that like either I check a few days before or um, the day before or something of the sort. And it's, I guess I could make a checklist that probably would be helpful, but let's head out because that is very loud. Um, I make sure I have extra halters and leads ready. I talked about all the stuff for emergencies ready. Um, <clears throat> we opened a new round bale of hay and then a new round bale of straw. You're very athletic. She just jumps on the round bales. Okay, let's go take this hay to the goats. And we also gotta knock off all that snow. I started, but we gotta get it all off. Everyone's in a naughty mood, huh? Here, goats. Here you go. They have lots of hay in inside, but they're standing out here, not eating. So, they'll give you some hay to eat. Everyone's staring at something back there. Nala, come here. <laughs> now, I guess a lot of you ask what I do about predators. And... A lot of it is this. If I see a fox, I usually start up the ATV and chase it off the property. Um, the dogs help a lot. But typically when the animals are acting weird like this, it's like a deer. Um, yeah, there's like deer prints through here. And it's because I feed hay to the horses, so that's like free food for them. It's very attractive to others. I don't see anything. Oh, you found a toy. Okay. Get it, Tuna. Get it. Get it, Tuna. Now she can't fit her mouth obviously around this ball, so I put a piece of baler twine on it so that she could carry it around. <laughs> Ready? Oh, you got it. So I'm gonna go fill hay nuts, and then I'll be right back. Good girl, Tina. Good girl, Luna. Good girl. You let your sister have a turn. You're so sweet. Okay, go get your ball back. Come on, Ella. Come on, Yusoi. That's a little heavy for you. You're gonna go clean up the goat stall. What's on your nose? Huh? You get straw on your nose. Okay. 
It's snowing a little bit right now. You guys stay here. No, stay here. The dogs are gonna bother you if you come this way. Okay, we gotta grab these two hay nets. They also have hay in their feeder, so they're fine. But we're gonna fill these up for tomorrow and for Wednesday, cause it's supposed to storm from like Tuesday morning to Wednesday evening. Okay, so I got the two hay nets. Um, I'm just gonna empty out the old hay and put in some new stuff. The horses are still finishing up the last bit of a round bale. If we're gonna get 30 centimeters of snow, um, give or take, it might be five, it might be 30, it might be 60. Um, I'd rather not put out a new, fresh new bale for, for it to just get covered in snow. So they can finish up this little bit here, um, which they are still eating. If they stop eating it, I'll throw out more hay. And then tomorrow, if they go out, um, depending on weather, they will also be thrown out fresh hay because if you missed it in our last video, I actually explained how horses stay warm and why um, I blanket one horse and not the other. So uh, if you missed it, there's this cool thing that horses coats do in a way that keeps them warm. It's called pilo erection. So Honey here has a really, really thick winter coat. If I were to put a blanket on her, it would either have to be warm enough to be as warm as her current coat or uh, warmer. Because the thing is, is that she looks really fluffy right now, if you can see. And so does Amora's neck right here. So this is called pilo erection. See how like fluffy um, and furry she looks? Coat is standing up on end um, in order for her to stay warm and trap the heat. If her coat was laying down, she wouldn't look as fluffy. And she, that's how her coat stops her from overheating as well. Now her winter coat is waterproof. So you'll see snow piling up on her back, which is super cool. Um, it doesn't melt because of her body heat because uh, her insulation is keeping the heat to her body and not releasing it into the air around her. So the snow stays cold and she stays warm. So this is our dear girl, Honey. And this is Amora. So Amora is three and a half. And she didn't grow much of a winter coat. She is also in a lot of work, as is Honey. And I want her to stay as warm as possible and using all of her energy towards growing and getting big and strong. So I don't really want her to lose weight, nor do I want her to get too cold. So I put a blanket on her. If I put a blanket on honey, it would have to be really cold, um, number one, for her to actually need a blanket. If I put a blanket on her now, uh, she'd be sweating 100% or she'd be too cold because her uh, coat cannot do that whole pilo erection that I was talking about where it stands up on end and insulates the body heat towards um, honey, the animal, the horse, and then that way she would be cold. So I'm doing her a favor <laughs> by not putting a blanket on her and by allowing nature to be the best um, situation for her. Now, I may not always blanket Amora, but this year I did. Uh, will that change? Maybe. Well, Will Honey ever wear a blanket? I don't know, maybe. Filled up the goats, hey net. I'm not gonna give it to them right now because they just got a big armful of hay outside and I don't want them to go inside, eat all this, and then that gets wasted. So I'll let them eat that up and then they can get this in a little bit. Just an FYI, if you're in a cold climate and you're gonna get a big snowstorm, 
walk around your farm and find things that either has been left out. Um, this is a lunge line that I just used for the dogs. It's basically a long leash. And pick it up because if you have a big snowstorm coming, then it's gonna get covered in snow, may get ruined, may get broken. We may just not be able to access it till spring. Okay, come on guys. Come on. So, I just check. We have a shovel here, salt, salt, another shovel. Also a shovel over there by the house. This is like the brush tool that we use to scrape the snow off the roof. But when it looks like this, um, a lot of it's ice and it's very heavy. So what we're gonna do is push it from the inside. Okay, so this is very easy. Um, and you just push on it. You don't push too hard because you don't want it to rip. So I'll get this done. Now this is not very much snow up there um, compared to what we're about to get. And it was cleared off earlier, but you want to make sure that you get everything off in order for this tarp to work with a very heavy snowfall. And I will also have to do this during the snowfall to make sure it doesn't accumulate too much. It's quite a bit darker in here um because the tarp is blue and there's snow on it and ice so we're gonna work on that because this will quickly spoil a round bale if it um gets it all wet and moldy <laughs> The dogs really love to play in the hay because there's always mice in here. You can't really avoid it that much. Um, so they're mouse hunting. No, you gotta take a running jump. Come on, you know better. Come on, come on. Come on, up. You can come up. You don't want me to pull you up, honey. Come on, come on. Hold you up. You're okay. You're yeah. You're welcome. She just gave me a kiss. Okay, so we cleared all the snow off the roof. Um, I'm looking forward to next year not having to do this um, because it is a pain in the butt. But it is what it is. This is what we had to work with for this year for hay storage. Um, but yes. Um, we do have to secure it a little bit better in a couple spots, which since I'm already up here, I'm going to do it. Don't ask me how I got onto this round bale. Um, yeah, it was like a running jump kind of thing. Fun stuff. When you put your mind to something, you can definitely get it done. Now that that's done, we're going to bring the goats their hay net. Then we're going to go get some lunch. Okay, watch out. Put down some more bedding for them. And then we're gonna hang up their hay net here. So, um, yeah, we'll top up their water in a little bit. 
and then they got fresh bedding, fresh hay, and they're all set. The chick some of the chickens are over in the greenhouse. Some of them are over here. Hi guys. Hi ladies. So cute. They've been raised up around Nala, so <laughs> they should be afraid of her, but they're not. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get up. Let's go. We're gonna go get some lunch. Lunch time. I realized that I completely forgot to end this video, so thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, like, and comment down below what you'd like to see next. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.